welcome back. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Natasha, and this channel is a family and homeschool vlog, as well as all the things that I love, all the things that I love to do and all the things that I love to share with my family. And one of those things is cooking. You know, I really get a lot of joy out of cooking. I love being in the kitchen um, alone and I love to just have my space and it's a time where I can be creative and a time where I can just invent sometimes and I really find it really peaceful just to be cooking in the kitchen sometimes with music on sometimes I watch my favorite uh, shows or YouTube channels while I'm cooking but it's a time where you know everyone kind of leaves me alone they give me my space sometimes they come in the kitchen and I'll just stop what I'm doing and be like you know get out now because I'm in the middle of cooking. This is my <laughs> my unwinding time, but I really do enjoy cooking. I didn't always love to cook, um, and I don't even know when it was that I began to love to cook, but I think it was when I started making dishes and people really enjoyed it, where they were like, wow, this is really good, or, or they would compliment me and say, wow, this is a great dish, you're a good cook. And I think that motivated me to continue to learn and grow in my cooking skills and styles and even inventing my own dishes. So today I wanted to share some of that with you. I wanted to, now this is not one that I invented, but it is one that we kind of do a little bit uh, in our own style. And it's a dish that actually originated in, with the ancient Egyptians. It is a dish that only the pharaohs of Egypt and the royal people would eat. Um, it is called molokia, and molokia is actually a plant, a green leafy plant that would look like a, a bit like a herb. Um, and it was something that they believed and is something very healthy for you, but something that would boost their immune system. And so it was fed only to royalty, to pharaohs, and it was made into a stew. And this dish has been adopted by many other cultures, uh, mostly I would say Middle Eastern, but many other um, uh, Jewish people, uh, Persians, Arabic, uh, Egyptians, uh, Moroccan, all have the same similar type of dish made with this malakia leaf. Eliana loves to be in my videos. You'll notice in many of my videos, I'm picking her up so she can say hello and wave, wave to the camera. She just loves to be in the video, so here's Eliana saying hello. <laughs> How this dish came about to be in our home was that my father-in-law one day gave me a package of frozen malakia leaves and didn't really tell me what to do with it. I wasn't sure what it was. Of course, my husband is not really a cook, so he wasn't. He just knew that it was something that he ate in his home but wasn't really sure how to make it so I had to try to figure out what exactly do I do with these with this frozen leaves and I started making it and tweaking it and making it our own and it became one of our favorites and I would say we have it sometimes as often as once a week but we really love it it's very healthy very fresh and follow along with me today as I show you how we make this dish behind me here I have a, bowl, a big bowl of uh, cilantro that I'm soaking just to get all of the sand off of it. And this is something that we uh, started doing maybe this summer, where my husband's aunt told us the way she makes her malakia is she adds uh, fresh cilantro in it. So um, I've done a little bit of that, but not quite this much. So this is going to be kind of new for us today, and I'm excited to try it. So follow along. So the first ingredient in this dish is white onion. I usually use one large white onion, but because my husband bought small little onions, uh, we're gonna use three onions. So we're gonna chop this up and uh, that's the first. I always, for some reason, feel a little bit clumsy when I'm trying to cook on the camera. <laughs> I think I do a little better when I'm not being, feeling like I'm being watched, but follow along. <laughs>
So the next ingredient for Molokia is, I think to me, one of the most important ingredients. You really have to put enough of it, and that is garlic. You're going to put, I, I actually don't follow the recipe in this case. This is how much I choose to put in, and I really think it's, for me, the, the best way. Uh, I put a whole garlic clove, the whole thing. <laughs> I think each individual one is a clove. Uh, one whole entire garlic I put in this. And also, another important thing about the garlic is that I don't finely chop it. I actually, uh, in a previous video, I talked about coarsely chopping it, but for Molokia, I actually even make it even a little larger than that because it tastes so good when you get a nice big chunk of the garlic in this dish. It just really makes the dish. And so I'm gonna chop up this entire garlic. Dropped one in there, I think. Where did they go? Hear it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's two. So this is a what day is today is Thursday, and uh, we finished our homeschool about an hour or so ago, and the kids are just playing in their uh, the homeschool kind of becomes a play area. They're just playing downstairs. Oh, I threw another one in. And, uh, and I then kind of start planning dinner. I mentioned before that I don't meal plan. And it's not, I have kind of tried to meal plan in the past and it's not something that I enjoyed. I didn't enjoy sticking to, I didn't enjoy the time that it took and the thought and I really kind of like to eat according to whatever I'm craving or whatever we're craving, craving as a family. Sometimes I might not be personally craving something but my kids are like, can we have this today? And so if we have the ingredients, that's what I'll kind of make. Sometimes the night before I will think this is what I'm making tomorrow, or really in the morning is when I start to think about what am I gonna make uh, for dinner tonight? D dinner is really the big meal for us. We usually always eat dinner together as a whole entire family. Uh, when my husband uh, works day shifts and then when he works night shifts, it'll just be me and the kids um, and on weekends. So dinner is our big meal. It's when I kind of plan to have a meal meal and I do always cook, well, especially right now during the pandemic, I always cook home cooked meals, but I would say 99% of the time uh, I cook home cooked meals and dinner is that time. Lunch will be something simple like a soup and sandwich or salad, things like that. Um, breakfast I always cook as well usually, you know, oatmeal, pancakes. And occasionally the kids will just want some cereal, a bowl of cereal, but that's not even often. I wouldn't even say once a week do we do that. But we really enjoy cooking from scratch, or I, I guess I'm the cook. I enjoy cooking from scratch and making whatever my family is kind of hoping to have. So dinner is our big meal, and uh, so I try to make something special every day when I can, when we have those ingredients to do that. So that's about the size, oh, I gotta see where the camera, that's about the size there of a piece of garlic that I might put in this dish, just to give you a reference. I usually wait until I've chopped up all the garlic before I turn on the stove with the onions. So I've got some oil in there, and now I'm gonna start sauteing the onions until they become nearly ready before I add the garlic, because the garlic I don't want overcooked. The, the more raw it is, for me, the better, not raw, but just slightly cooked and not burnt. And garlic, when it is chopped up small, can burn quite quickly. So I'll start the onions first um, and I'll start them now once the garlic is ready. So next I'm gonna just turn on the oven. Or stove, I should say stove. <laughs> 
So next I'm just gonna set this garlic aside and start working on... Hmm? What smell? Maybe gar onions? Maybe. Garlic and onions. So I'm gonna set this garlic aside and uh, start working on the cilantro. I'm just gonna check to make sure that I've rinsed it enough times and that there isn't any sand left in it. So I'm just gonna give the cilantro one more little rinse over before I chop it all up. So the cilantro is ready to be chopped up. Now cilantro is a bit different from parsley. I'm sure you guys all know what cilantro is, but with, cilantro, uh, with parsley, often the stem is a little bit tough and woody. Um, and so you usually pick off all the leaves, cut the stems, you know, part of the stem you might be able to eat, but the thicker part of it you wouldn't eat because it's just a little too woody. Um, but with the cilantro, all of it is really quite soft and cooks up very soft. And so I use the entire thing. I don't chop off any of the stem. I chop off the entire uh, piece, except for maybe just the, this one, it, I already ripped off uh, the roots. The grocery store had, didn't have it chopped it had the roots still attached, so I just chopped off the roots before I washed them. So I'm just going to chop up this entire bowl, and that's going to go into the molokia. sort of keep coarsely chopped but the stems you don't want them too large because you know even though they do get nice and soft in the dish when you cook it um, they'll be a little bit a little chunky for the dish the dish itself is quite fine uh, almost like a chunky puree in a sense uh, I wouldn't even call it a puree it's 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 chunkier than that but it doesn't have large chunks in it like a, a typical stew that you might think of it's almost uh, between a soup and a stew. <laughs> Want to say hi, Liv? Since you keep talking. Hi. No. <laughs> Back here. There hi. You <laughs> okay. Thank you. No, bye. So the onions are pretty much ready. I'm gonna now add the garlic. As I said, um, they're almost, I don't know if you would call it al dente. <laughs> they're, they're in between being fully cooked, but I find it just gives it a bit of a fresher taste. And let me just grab a teaspoon. So our uh, way of making molokia, and I think all of them really, uh, are, have simple ingredients. The only spice that we add to molokia is uh, the turmeric. And I do, I kind of eyeball it, but I would say about a half a teaspoon. You could do a little more, but it's not an overpowering um, flavor. It's really more of an aroma. And it gives it a little bit of color as well. So we'll just give that a stir to uh, coat all the garlic and onions and continue let, uh, letting the garlic cook. And it really, I mean, it does have a taste. It kind of brings out a unique taste in the garlic and onions, I find. But in and of itself, it doesn't have a whole strong flavor. It just enhances, I guess, the flavors of, of the foods you put it in. So we'll just let that cook up a little longer. We've been making this dish for a few years now. And I think for us, it's really become a comfort food where, you know, it really, it's like a ch good chicken soup. <laughs> it's just something that we look forward to um, that's tasty and just really kind of makes us feel like we're at home, which we are, <laughs> but just gives you that home feeling, that food that really gives you a feeling of home and family. 
and uh, that's what molokia does for us. It's a great, a really great dish. What are some of the comfort foods that you all enjoy uh, making at home? Why don't you comment below and let me know? Um, I'd love to hear it and just, I love trying new dishes. So sometimes, you know, if it's something that I've never heard of before or tried making before, I'm really intrigued and I, I love to try new things. So comment below, let me know, what are your comfort foods at home? So there are really so many variations to Molokia. And, uh, you know, there are uh, some uh, cultures will use chunks of beef. Uh, many often use um, chicken like a chicken thigh or chicken legs. Um, and it's always usually cooked in uh, chicken or some kind of, usually chicken stock, I found. Um, how we make it, and it's actually how my father-in-law uh, makes it, is with ground beef. We always have ground beef at home. I find ground beef is something <laughs> that's a staple in our home. We can use it in so many ways. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, we buy it in um, big, large family packages, divide it up into several small pieces and freeze it in the deep freezer. And it just lasts us for a long time. Um, but uh, one kind of variation for us, uh, you know, in comparison to others who make it with ground beef is it, t uh, I think, typically is made with only a small amount of ground beef. But because we eat this as a main dish, we put a little more ground beef into it. Now, it's not gonna look like this total big ground beef dish. You'll see as we add the other ingredients to it, the main portion of this um, meal is not ground beef. It's sort of a, um, you know, an accent to it. But uh, we do love meat in our family. And uh, I, I think, I mean, we do eat a lot of vegetarian dishes. Um, but sometimes you just don't feel, you know, sustained when you're only eating those vegetable type dishes. So um, I put a nice size uh, portion of ground beef in that. So I'm going to brown this up and then I'll show you what that next step is. So I season the uh, ground meat with just a bit of salt. Um, just to give, I, thought, I find with ground beef, especially when it's been frozen, uh, it can sometimes have a funny taste. Um, we tend to buy a good quality of ground beef, but even then, sometimes when it's been frozen for a little while, it can have a bit of a frosty, a, you know, a frostbite kind of taste, I don't know. Um, so I do add just a little bit of salt when I'm cooking it, but not enough salt. It's not salt to add the flavor to the dish so much, it's just to make, to take away any unwanted flavors from the ground beef. So there it is there, you can see molokia chopped, um, and that is how it comes uh, in the grocery store. I don't believe that you can buy fresh molokia leaves. You may be able to, it is not grown here. It is grown uh, more in the Middle East, and uh, so it may be um, only found frozen. But uh, this is something that we get at a Middle Eastern store, and that it's most likely where you would be able to find it. I'm going to use two packages of this. Sometimes I make one package and it only really lasts us for maybe one and a half meals. And the next day everybody's looking for the molokia and we're kind of fighting over the last dish. <laughs> so the ground beef is nicely browned. Uh, the onions and garlic are perfect. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the packages of molokia and we just cut it open with a pair of scissors. There's actually a second package inside. And it's very, like I said, it's, it's, it's really kind of a chunky puree. Um, you can add it frozen to the dish and the heat of the dish will melt it all, but I just found um, a little faster to thaw it out beforehand. I just soak it in some uh, water and let it thaw out the package. And so we'll just dump both of these packages. Kind of has a bit of a, now you'll see if you ever do try this food, the texture itself has a, I don't want to call it slimy because that makes it not sound very appetizing, but it does have a bit of a, uh, a slimy texture, but very tasty and it's not slimy at all. But uh, that's, that's the molokia leaf. It has a very unique sort of texture when it cooks. A bit like, um, a bit like a spinach when it's cooked and how it kind of shrivels up and gets quite um, slimy.
don't like to waste any of it. So I'm just trying to get all of it out of the packaging here without getting it all over my hands. I just wanted to kind of give you a better look at the texture and when you pour it in and you'll see what I mean, but it is a very, very tasty dish. So you'll see that here in the bag and hopefully as you can see, you can see as I pour it in, that is sort of when it's finely chopped up, you know, almost like uh, an okra. If you've ever tried okra, when you cook that, a sort of a slime <laughs> sort of develops as it's cooking. That is uh, what the Molokia leaf looks like when it's finely chopped up. So now I'm just going to give it a stir. Now, if I were to only add one of those packages of Molokia, I would only add half of that ground beef. And actually, I probably would have added a little less ground beef than I did now, but I didn't think to divide it smaller beforehand. And as I already had it thawed out and kind of didn't feel like putting more back into the fridge, I added the whole amount. So this is a little bit more, well, actually it looks pretty good now that I'm looking at it. It doesn't look like too much meat. I think because I've used the two full packages of Molokia, it actually worked out to the right uh, quantities of both. It's balanced. So let me just show you what this looks like now. I don't have my phone right next to it anymore because I felt like the steam might be ruining my phone somehow. So I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth and show you instead of having it right into the pot the whole time. So there is that combination of just the Molokia. And you can see it's very thick right now. It's uh, the meat is, uh, is, quite e is quite dispersed. So you can see that it's, it is mostly Molokia now and less meat. It's not just a big meat dish. But that is what the consistency would be. Now we will be adding some water, but next I'm going to actually add the cilantro. So let me go ahead and put that in. Oops, sorry, just grabbing that with the other hand. I'm recording with one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the cilantro. Now you can see how I've cut it. It's not uh, finely chopped because it does shrink up quite a bit. And well, I mean, some people do take their time and finally chop it up, but I, uh, you know, sometimes I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> so here you go. I'm gonna put in uh, all the cilantro into the dish. And I'm just gonna scrape the rest off with my hands. In just a moment. There it is, and so I'm gonna just stir that up a bit. Now, as I mentioned before, um, I have used cilantro in the Molokia before when it was first suggested for us to try cilantro we thought oh we'll definitely try it you know I love cilantro I love the freshness it has a very citrusy nice clean taste and uh, so we added it but we didn't add a lot we added a tiny little bunch of it and so we could tell that it would be really amazing with cilantro but not with a nice big bunch so this is actually the first time we're trying it with such a big bunch of cilantro I'm gonna need my other hand now to stir this, but now I'm just gonna stir this in so that the cilantro can cook up with the rest of the molokia. So as I've said, this is a stew, but it is too thick at the moment. And so the next step, and one of the final steps is to add water. Now the amount of water is pretty crucial. Often in the past I've gotten it wrong and my husband will say it's too runny, it's too much like a soup, it needs to be thicker. And then I don't put quite enough and it's a little too thick. So there is a bit of an art to how much water you should put and I really don't have an amount to say to you how much you should put in there. You kind of have to eyeball it and know what it should look like. So I just take some filtered water and I'm gonna just pour it in and stir and see uh, what the consistency is looking like. I've had it enough times now um, to know what it should look like. And it's like I said, it's between a soup and a stew.
and it also is the kind of a dish that thickens up as it's cooking too. So you don't, you're not looking for the exact consistency when you're at first initially adding the water and that's done. So you can make it a little waterier and it's gonna thicken up. So I'm just kind of going for that. Now I actually thought that this amount of water would be too much, but I actually, let me show you. I've already added about two cups of water and this is still, I would say too thick. I would put a little bit more and it will thicken up a little bit more as it's cooking. So I'll probably put, I don't know, I'm gonna estimate about another half a cup, probably half a cup of water into this. Yeah, so I feel like this is now flowing smoothly when I stir it. I'm not struggling to stir it. It's kind of flowing smoothly, but still a bit sludgy and not, you know, like a soup. And this will thicken up more. And who knows, I may have to add a little extra water later on. Um, so the last and final step is going to be, um, so malachia um, typically or originally would have been made with a chicken broth. Um, and so I usually actually do put chicken broth in even though I'm using beef um, But I don't have any chicken broth left. I have uh, these beef broth bouillon So I'm just going to use what I have um, It will still taste excellent and I wouldn't even know that it would make such a big difference at this point But I do eat normally if I could pick what I would would be my optimum choice would be the chicken uh, bouillon and second would be a vegetable bouillon and so I'll go ahead and use the beef because that's what I have so we'll put that in there, let it dissolve. But the final step now is to just let this uh, simmer on a low heat once it comes to a boil, which it already is at a kind of at a very slow roll and boil. Uh, I'm going to let it simmer on low heat for about an hour. The longer you let, um, I find, Middle Eastern and Persian food uh, stew in its own juices, the taster it becomes. And my husband often says that this food tastes even better the second day. Um, because that's just, it, it's, it's sitting in its own juices overnight and tastes even better the second day. So this is something that the longer you let it stew, the better. So I will let it stew minimum one hour, but as it's stewing, I'm gonna start making some steamed basmati rice. So that's all I have for you today. I thank you so much for watching, and I really encourage you to try this dish out sometime if you're able to find those ingredients. I know some of these ingredients might be a little harder to find, especially where you might live. But if you're able to try it uh, at some point, it is quite amazing. I think you'll really be impressed with the taste. Here's the final product. This is how we would serve it with some basmati rice. And I forgot to mention that you would squeeze some fresh lemon over the malakia. This dish really turned out to be a hit. The kids loved it and ate every last bite. Thanks for watching.